Hello guys, this is Sir EJ and welcome again for another math tutorial. In today's topic, we will be discussing how to solve the measures of central tendency for the group data. These are the following objectives we need to attain for today's topic. Letter A, fill up the frequency distribution table. Letter B, solve the mean, median, and the mode for the group data. And letter C, value accumulated knowledge as means of new understanding. Let's have this example. These are the test scores of G10 Pythagoras in a math exam. So these are their scores. So all in all, we have 50 students who took the exam. So the first step we need to do to construct a frequency distribution table is to determine the number of classes. In determining the number of classes, there are no hard rules in doing this. The only guidelines is to pick between 5 to 20 classes. But there is a more mathematical way in doing this and that is to use the formula k classes is equal to 1 plus 3.322 logarithm times n and that is what we will be using for today so let's apply the formula and the number of residents is equal to 50 we will substitute it with our formula so i bring down one plus 3.322 logarithm of 50. Simplifying this by pressing this on your calculator, so k will be equal to 6.64. To get the number of classes, we will round the number. So 6.64, if we will round the number, this will be equal to 7. So the number of classes will be equal to 7. The next step we need to do is to find the interval or the class width. By using the formula, class width is equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value all over the number of classes. So to find the maximum value, this is just the highest score in the given data. So the maximum value or the highest score is equal to 40 minus the minimum value which is the lowest score and that is equal to 6 all over the number of classes, which is equal to 7, the one that we have computed earlier. So we will simplify this. 40 minus 6 is equal to 34, and then 34 divided by 7 will be equal to 4.857. Then we will round the number. So 4.857 will be equal to 5. Therefore, the value of the class width or interval is equal to 5. The next step is to arrange the data in ascending order, from the lowest scores up to the highest scores. After arranging it, we will now construct the class interval, the frequency, lower boundary, and the less than cumulative frequency. So using this given table, let's identify first the value of i or the value of the class width. We have computed it earlier on our previous slide and that is equal to 5. After that, to get the class interval, we will start with the lowest score which is equal to 6. So we will count 5 numbers starting from 6. So we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 6 to 10 for the value of our first class and then for our second class, we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 11 to 15 for our second class. And then for our third class, we have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 16 to 20. Then let's continue. We have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So we have 21 to 25 for our fourth class. Then 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 for our fifth class. And then for our sixth class, we have 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 
And then for our seven class, we have 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So 36 to 40 for our seven class. After that, Let's now construct the frequency. So we can get the frequency by counting the numbers indicated on each class. So let's start with 6 to 10. There are 2. So 1, 2, 4, 6 to 10. And then 11 to 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the frequency of 11 to 15 is 7. And then for 16 to 20, 2, 4, 6, 7, there is also 7. And then for... 21 to 25, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then for 26 to 30, just count it. And we have also 12. And then for 31 to 35, we have 4. And then for 36 to 40, we have 6. After that, let's get the total frequency, the value of n. We will add this number, get the summation, to get the total frequency. 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. 10 plus 12 is equal to 22. 22 plus 12 is equal to 34. 34 plus 7 is equal to 41. 41 plus 7 is equal to 48. And then 48 plus 2 is equal to 50. So the total frequency is equal to 50. Then after that, let's find the lower boundary. So to get the lower boundary, we will just subtract all the lower limits by 0.5. So we have 6 minus 0.5, that will be equal to 5.5. 11 minus 0.5, that will be equal to 10.5. 16 minus 0.5, that will be equal to 15.5. 21 minus 0.5, this will be equal to 20.5. 26 minus 0.5, this will be equal to 25.5. 31 minus 0.5, this will be equal to 30.5, and 36 minus 0.5 is equal to 35.5. Then, for the less than commutative frequency, we will look at the frequency of our first class. So this is our first class. What is the frequency of our first class? So the frequency of our first class is equal to 2. So we will write 2 here. We will just copy 2 here, and then after that, we will add 2 by the frequency of the second class. So 2 plus 7 will be equal to 9. So 9 will be added to the frequency of the third class. 9 plus 7 will be equal to 16. And we will just continue the process. 16 plus 12 will be equal to 28. 28 plus 12 will be equal to 40. 40 plus 4 will be equal to 44. And 44 plus 6 will be equal to 50. The next step is to solve for the midpoint and the frequency times the midpoint. So to get the midpoint, we will just add the lower limit and the upper limit divided by 2. So 6 plus 10 is equal to 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. 11 plus 15 is equal to 26 divided by 2 is equal to 13. 16 plus 20 is equal to 36 divided by 2 is equal to 18. 21 plus 25 is equal to 46, divided by 2 is equal to 23. 26 plus 30 is equal to 56, divided by 2 is equal to 28. 31 plus 35 is equal to 66, divided by 2 is equal to 33. 36 plus 40 is equal to 76, divided by 2 is equal to 38. After that, let's find the frequency times the midpoint. So we will just multiply the value of the frequency times the value of the midpoint. 2 times 8, this is equal to 16. 7 times 13, this is equal to 91. 7 times 18 is equal to 126. 12 times 23 is equal to 276. 12 times 28 is equal to 336. 4 times 33 is equal to 132. 6 times 38 is equal to 228. And then we will add all these numbers under the frequency times the midpoint column. So we will get the summation of frequency times the midpoint. So adding all these numbers will be equal to 1205. So the summation of frequency times the midpoint is equal to 1205. 
So let's now calculate the mean for the group data. So we will be using the formula of mean for the group data. Mean is equal to the summation of frequency times the midpoint all over n. So all we need to do is to divide 1,205 divided by 50. So 1,205 divided by 50, so mean will be equal to 24.1. Therefore, the average of the scores of 50 students of G10 Pythagoras in a math test is equal to 24.1. So let's now calculate the median. So in calculating the median, so we have construct already the cumulative frequency distribution. And then we will decide the class that contains the median class. And then the median class is the first class with the value of cumulative frequency, which is equal at least n over 2. And then we will be using the formula of the median. So this will be the formula of the median. Median is equal to LB plus the quantity n over 2 minus less than C F sub B all over F sub M times the class width, wherein N is equal to the total frequency. And then less than C F sub B is equal to the cumulative frequency before the median class. F M is equal to the frequency of the median class. LM is equal to the lower class boundary of the median class, and I is equal to the class width or the interval. Let's now calculate the median. So in calculating the median, again, the first step is to get the median class by using the formula n over 2. So we will divide the total frequency by 2. 50 divided by 2 will be equal to 25. And we will check the column for the less than cumulative frequency which of these numbers is greater than or equal to 25? So the first number which is greater than or equal to 25 is 28. So therefore, the median class is located on the fourth class. So since 28 is on the fourth class, so median class will also be on the fourth class. And then after we have determined the median class, we will be now using the formula for the median of the group data. Median is equal to lower boundary plus the quantity n over 2 minus the less than cumulative frequency before the median class all over the frequency of the median class times the class width or the interval. Substituting the corresponding value, the value of the lower boundary, so the lower boundary of our median class, which is on the fourth class, is equal to 20.5. First class, second class, third class, fourth class. So the lower boundary of the fourth class or the median class is equal to 20.5. Plus n over 2 will be equal to 25. So we have already computed it earlier. Minus the value of less than cumulative frequency before the median class. So the less than cumulative frequency of the median class is equal to 28. So the number before 28 is equal to 16. So we will copy 16 here. Then the frequency of the median class. So the frequency of the fourth class is equal to 12 times the class width, which is equal to 5. After that, we will be simplifying this. So bring down 20.5 and then 25 minus 16 is equal to 9. Then 9 over 12 is equal to 0 0.75. And then 0 0.75 times 5 is equal to 3.75. So 3.75 plus 20.5 is equal to 24.25. Therefore, the middle value or the median is equal to 24.25. Let's now calculate the mode for the group data. So mode is the value that has the highest frequency in the data set. For the group data, class mode or the modal class is the class width with the highest frequency. So to find the mode for the group data, we will be using this formula. Mode is equal to the lower boundary of the modal class plus the quantity d sub 1 all over d sub 1 plus d sub 2 times the class width, wherein i is equal to the class width or the interval. D sub 1 is the difference between the frequencies of the modal class and the next lower class. D sub 2 is the difference between the frequencies of the modal class and the next upper class. And then 
LMO is the lower boundary of the modal class. So let's now calculate for the value of the mode. So to calculate for the value of the mode, we need to identify the modal class. So the modal class is the class with the highest frequency. So in this example, there are two class with the same frequency, and that is the fourth class and the fifth class. So if that is the case, you can choose any between these two and you will arrive with the same answer. So let's try using the fourth class, this class. So this class has a frequency of 12. So lower boundary of the modal class is equal to 20.5. So the lower boundary of the fourth class and then D sub 1 is equal to the value of the frequency of the fourth class minus the value of the class below it. So the third class, 12 minus 7 is equal to 5. And then to get the value of D sub 2, it is the value of the frequency of the modal class minus the value of the frequency of the next class, which is the frequency of the fifth class. So 12 minus 12 will be equal to 0. And then the class width is equal to 5. Let's now use the formula for the mode of the group data. So we have lower boundary of the modal class plus the quantity d sub 1 all over d sub 1 plus d sub 2 times the class width. Substituting the corresponding value, so we have lower boundary of the modal class is equal to 20.5 plus the quantity, the value of d sub 1 is equal to 5 all over the value of d sub 1 again is equal to 5 plus the value of d sub 2 is equal to 0 times the class width which is equal to 5. So bring down 20.5, 5 plus 0 is equal to 5, 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1, copy 5. 1 times 5 is equal to 5, 5 plus 20.5 is equal to 25.5. Therefore, the value of the mode for this group theta is equal to 25.5. Let's check if we will arrive with the same answer if we will be using the fifth class for our modal class. So the lower boundary of the modal class is equal to 25.5. So modal class is on the fifth class, first class, second class, third class, fourth class, fifth class, and the lower boundary is 25.5. So to get the value of D sub 1, we will subtract the frequency of the modal class which is equal to 12 minus the frequency before the fifth class. So the frequency before the fifth class is the frequency of the fourth class which is also equal to 12. So 12 minus 12 will be equal to 0. For D sub 2, we will get the frequency of the modal class which is equal to 12 minus the frequency of the next class, which is equal to 4. So 12 minus 4 will be equal to 8. So D sub 2 will be equal to 8. And the value of the class width is equal to 5. Let's now use the formula of the mode for the group data. So we have mode is equal to the lower boundary of the modal class plus the quantity D sub 1 all over D sub 1 plus D sub 2 times class width or interval. Substituting the corresponding value, so we have 25.5 plus the quantity, the value of D sub 1 is 0. Again, D sub 1 is 0. D sub 2 is equal to 8. The class width is equal to 5. We will simplify this. So we have bring down 25.5, then 0 plus 8 is equal to 8. 0 divided by 8 is equal to 0. 0 times 5 will be equal to 0. So the value of the mode is equal to 25.5. Therefore, the value of the mode is equal to 25.5. So we have get the same answer using the fourth and fifth class as our modal class. So they are the same.